Hello everyone! We had a surprise yesterday morning when we walked into the Scansy house. Our beloved kelp crab had molted. So that meant that she had grown and was moved into um, a larger shell that she made. And so we have uh, the molt here. Um, so I just wanted to take a quick moment to talk about what crab molts are and um, and why they happen. So um, I've got a couple different crab molts here. These are um, from other species of crabs that we have here in uh, the Salish Sea. We have this little pygmy rock crab and a Pacific graceful crab molt. Um, these older molts are very stiff and uh, sturdy, whereas the fresh molt from our kelp crab is still very flexible um, and I can I can still pose her a little bit uh, and what's cool about crab molt is there is no crab inside so it's not a it's not like a dead crab it's not stinky um, and we can lift it up and see on the inside that there is no one home there are the remains of the gills um, and the internal structures that go along with the outer part of their carapace but nobody's home. So those crab eyes are absolutely empty there. All of the very complex mouth parts. Uh, crabs have three different sets of jaws. Um, all, everything all the way down to the very, very tips of their toes and pinchers comes out. And they come out kind of like a hand coming out of a glove is the best way to explain it. They kind of pull everything out. Um, once they do that, they are soft and squishy like a marshmallow. They're very, very delicate and very vulnerable during that time period. So uh, I won't be showing you our molted crab right now because she has puffed up with water and she's hiding in the tank, um, kind of waiting. She doesn't really realize she's in a uh, safe place in our tanks uh, where we don't have any predators. And so her natural instinct is to hide and wait about three days or so until her shell hardens. Um, our shell here will, um, will stiffen up as soon as it's dried. So right now it's still kind of wet. Um, we have the ability to kind of pose it however I want, but it shows us a little bit of uh, the flexibility that this crab species has compared to, say, our Pacific graceful crab. Uh, they are a much less flexible crab. They can't really reach above much more than their antenna on the front there. Um, so these crab molts came from other crabs that we have had in our um, in our touch tanks. So the Pacific graceful crab, uh, when they grow, and they tend to molt yearly, um, although really it's determined by their um, their growth. So if they're growing a lot, like a younger crab, they may molt several times a year. Uh, graceful crabs get mistaken for Dungeness crabs very often, um, but the thing to look for is this little tiny notch that's beyond the widest. That's the surefire way to tell. Um, also the size, a graceful crab will not get to the same size that a Dungeness crab does, but they are both in that cancer crab grouping um, which is kind of your typical crab shaped. Um, this other crab is also called a cancer crab. This is uh, the pygmy rock crab. It's also called the Oregon uh, cancer crab and its scientific name is cancer organensis. Um, so that kind of helps you remember that. This one is interesting because it's a female crab. Um, you can see kind of the hairs coming out of that abdominal flap. That's where she would be holding her eggs. Um, I can tell that it's a female also because even though these pinchers are, are seem quite large compared to the males, they are a bit smaller. So male crabs tend to have much larger pinchers. Um, so on our kelp crab here, this female kelp crab, her pinchers are not much wider than her legs, um, but in a male kelp crab, they will be um, sized up a bit. Um, they also tend to take on more of a red coloration in the males, um, whereas the females are more kind of drab colored and blending in. Um, a molt also gives us a close opportunity to view like the complicated mouth parts of this, this animal without interfering, right? You would never want to get this close uh, to a living crab, especially because these pinchers are very, very sharp. So um, kelp crabs are more omnivores. Um, they can eat kelp um, and other seaweeds. They can also scavenge and eat dead things and they're not above catching live food if they come across it so really more opportunistic um, and they have more cutting pinchers so 
really a nice wide opening so they can grab really, really large things. Um, and it's interesting to note that the top portion of the pincher moves, not the bottom. So the bottom is fixed to the rest of this kind of forearm section, which is kind of a cool observation. Um, on our other crab species, so on the graceful crab, they are more uh, crushing pinchers. So they are able to crush through other animals' hard external skeleton like this. Um, and they are a carnivorous species, although they will eat some algae, so I guess that makes them omnivores, but um, kind of more all-purpose crab claws. Um, whereas this species is going to be picking up small items. So rather than kind of tearing or cutting like the other two, the pygmy rock crab just kind of picks up the smaller things that there are to eat. Um, and most crabs are pretty opportunistic, so they will take advantage of whatever is there. So I will try to do a broadcast next week once our crab has hardened. Um, it takes about three days or so for them to harden up, um, but the next time I'm in the office I'll do my best um, to show you our newly hardened kelp crab and we can take a look and see just how much larger she got. They can get up to like 30% larger as they grow, um, which is the whole reason why they have to molt. So um, Crabs that die of old age are crabs that get stuck in what's called terminal interphase where they're no longer able to, to molt and they can't get out of their shell and they simply grow too big um, and suffocate, which is kind of a terrible way to go if you're a crab. You either get eaten or you suffocate in your shell. Um, but they can, they can live as long as a decade for most of these species, which is kind of cool. All right, well, I'm going to sign off now, but um, I'll bring you another interesting, fun science lesson from the Scanzi House next week. So thanks, everybody, for tuning in now and learning about crabs, and I hope you have a great weekend.